Hi there, I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you so much for joining me for another vlog today. So today's vlog is going to be a little bit different to my um, sewing makes and sort of sewing plans fabric haul type vlogs. I'm going to be talking all about what I've been wearing this last week that's been handmade um, and it's all part of Me Made May. So you may already know about Me Made May. It's an initiative set up on Instagram by Sozo Blog and I'll include a link to her Instagram profile below in case you fancy checking it out. But she came up with the idea of Me Made May a few years back and it was basically designed, I think, to kind of celebrate handmade clothing, sewing, knitting, all aspects. And you basically en encourage to make a pledge at the beginning of the month. And it's just, I guess, to help you think about your handmade wardrobe and either celebrate your handmade wardrobe or maybe make some plans for um, filling some gaps or maybe um, finishing some whip you have. But you can make a pledge to do whatever you want um, in the month of May to do with your handmade wardrobe and then everyone kind of shares their progress on Instagram. So it's really nice because um, lots of people are posting their daily outfits and what, they've, um, what they're wearing that's handmade, which is great inspiration and lovely to see um, everyone's different daily outfits. I always really like seeing um, what people are wearing. And people are posting pictures of um, um, garments they've finished that they've had in their, sitting in their whip pile for a while or plans for um, where, where, what gaps they're gonna fill and all sorts. Um, yes, yeah, so it's just a really fun month on Instagram. And I thought for a vlog what I'd do is, yeah, just um, talk you through what I've been wearing this week. And um, so yeah, I've taken part in Me Made Me, this is my third year. And what I'm planning to do this year, my pledge is, the same as last year actually, I'm planning to wear an item of handmade clothing every day, but um, to make it a little bit more challenging and also to get me to make, mix up what I do wear, Every week I'm going to try and wear um, a different patent company's pattern each day. So each week I'll be wearing seven different patent companies from Saturday to Friday. And I did this last year and I found it really um, helpful because it really encouraged me to reach for things in my wardrobe that I don't always reach for. Because um, I do sometimes, I guess like us all, get stuck in a bit of a rut of going for the similar things. So I thought that really encouraged me to make sure I'm wearing the whole breadth of my clothes. And... Um, and my other pledge is to finish off a few things I've had um, cut out from when my sewing machine was broken. So hopefully I'll have a few new makes to share with you towards the end of May um, that I'm going to get on with this month, just to sort of finish off, clear off my pile, reduce my stash down so I kind of finish May, hopefully feeling like I'm on top of everything and I can kind of um, start a bit from scratch. Yes, yeah, so those are my plans. So in this vlog, I'm going to be talking through all the outfits I've worn this week. So hopefully you'll enjoy hearing a little bit about them all. So I usually um, start my vlogs by talking about what I'm wearing today, but I'll actually save this um, outfit to the end of the vlog because um, it's my Friday outfit. It's Friday today when I'm filming. Um, yeah, so that, that's my plan. So I'll talk you through instead what I started the week wearing, which is last Saturday. And last Saturday, I actually wore a new make, um, which was just hot off the sewing machine. And um, I should just start by saying, even though it's May here and it should be um, sunny and a bit warmer now, it's been freezing. <laughs> it's been really cold. Um, yesterday evening, we had loads and loads of rain coming down. Um, yeah, it's just the weather's just not been very um, nice and spring like at all. So I've been mainly um, choosing cozy clothes this week. Especially because also we have a little leak in our house, um, a, a pipe leak, so we haven't had the heating on at all. So it has been extra chilly inside the house. Um, hopefully the plumber is coming later to fix that. Um, it's only a small one, thankfully. Um, but yeah, um, extra um, reason for me to have needed some snuggly clothes this week. But yeah, my first um, make is this one here. And it's a new sweatshirt. Um, and I thought when I bought this fabric um, a couple of months ago and I didn't f cut it out straight away, I thought, oh, maybe I should just leave it to next winter. But actually it's been so cold, it's nice to have another sweatshirt in my wardrobe. And this is the Megan Nielsen um, Jarrah sweatshirt. And I made it in this lovely, um, kind of like a dusky pink coloured fleece back sweatshirt fabric. So yeah, it's all fleecy as you can see here with this cool grid print on. And I got this from Beyond the Pink Door. Um, so it's a company run by Andrea and her daughter in Ireland and they have some really lovely fabrics and I'll include a link to their website below in case you fancy checking them out. They really have some beautiful fabrics. And I saw this one come on Instagram and I'd seen this um, fabric come up in a few other colours but I saw this dusky pink colour and it really, um, I just really liked it. I thought it was a bit different, not a colour I have in my wardrobe a lot. So I snapped it up and I knew I was going to turn it into a sweatshirt and I thought it would probably be the Yara, Jara, sorry because it's got a lovely relaxed fit and I thought it would suit this fabric quite nicely. And then I, um, I, once I got the fabric, I thought, oh no, what colour 
um, ribbing am I going to use to go with it? Because I didn't really want to use the fabric itself for the neckband because I thought it might look a bit too much with the grid print going in a different direction around the neckline and around the cuffs. So I thought I wanted to um, use some ribbing. And I thought about using white ribbing, but I wasn't sure um, for myself. I'm a little bit too messy to, I think, use white ribbing. I think the cuffs would be, um, yeah, um, dirty and no time flat probably. And, and yeah, not, yeah, not ideal for me. <laughs> but I had this um, ribbing in my stash and I thought it really worked quite nicely. It's kind of like a dark sort of marley grey colour. Yeah, so I quite like how it goes. And I've also um, stitched around the um, top stitch around the cut and the cut, the um, top stitch around the neck bands also in a grey fabric to kind of pick up this grey. So I had a bit of fun there. And then I had a bit of fun with stripe matching too. So I'm quite pleased how it's come out, say on the shoulders here, with all the nice sort of stripes leaning up in a V shape and then going down to the sleeve. Um, so yeah, that's my Jarrah and I'll put a picture of me wearing it. It's really cozy and really relaxed. Um, oh, I'll show you the pattern so you can see what it looks like actually. Here's the pattern. Um, it's a lovely pattern with loads of different options. And for this um, sweatshirt, I just made this really basic um, straight short sweatshirt option with the um, dropped sleeve. I really like that feature, the dropped sleeve. Um, yeah, just a plain sort of crew neckline. And um, I made it in the size zero, um, which is um, for bust 32, waist 24 and hips 34. My bust is 32 and my waist and hips are a bit bigger, but because it's a really relaxed boxy fit, it's just fine, I think, in this size. So yeah, I, as I said, I'll put the picture back up again so you can see. I just wore it with a pair of jeans to keep me nice and cosy on a weekend day with the family. I think it was quite a rainy day that day, so we stayed in mostly. Um, but yeah, uh, that's my first um, thing, a new make, the Megan Nielsen um, Jara sweatshirt. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased with that one. And I'm glad I'm getting some wear out of it now rather than having to wait until um, the winter. <laughs> it's practically winter now anyway. So moving on to day two of this week, which was a Sunday. And um, it was actually a bank holiday weekend, which is nice. Um, but um, so on the Sunday, my son went rock climbing, um, which is really nice actually, because he, ha he loves rock climbing. And um, we have a kind of wall that's actually, we're quite lucky, it's not too far a drive away from us at all. And he used to go um, on a fairly regular basis before the lockdown, but he hadn't been since the lockdown. So he was really excited to be back there. But um, the center is really air conditioned. It's almost absolutely freezing in there. So I knew he needed something cozy to wear. So I decided to wear my um, Nina Lee Southbank um, sweater. And it's a cropped version, as you can see it's quite short, apologies, it's a bit wrinkly. Um, and I made this in this lovely um, fleece back sweatshirt. Um, it's got this lovely little flex on it. And I can't remember where I got this um, fabric from. It was a long time ago I got this one. And if I can remember, I'll pop details down below. But I've seen it pop up on a few different um, online um, and fabric websites. They're quite popular, these kind of cosy colours, fleece back um, um, sweatshirts. And I've got some black as well. And I made um, a black version of this too, because I love um, a cropped sweater. And it keeps you really cosy with the high neckline. But I think the cropped version works really well with skirts. So I'll put up the outfit to show you what I wore. I wore it with a ready to wear skirt. So um, as much as I love all my handmade clothing, I do still um, keep clothing from before I started to sew. I don't really buy it money ready to wear things at all these days, mainly just sort of underwear and tights and that sort of thing. I generally make everything I wear these days. But I still have quite a few um, older ready to wear garments that I do like to wear too. And I'm conscious in me made May of um, not only bringing out my handmade things, but making sure I'm wearing those older garments too. Because um, I think they, they, they just because you make the handmade clothing doesn't mean you should feel bad about wearing ready to wear too. Um, if you've got something and it's not, um, and it's still in good condition, it should be worn too. It seems wasteful just to get rid of it when you're making your own things, I think. So anyway, um, I'm wearing here my Nina Lee cropped Southbank sweater, and I think it really works well with a skirt. That's my ready to wear skirt, I'll wear with it. So it kept me nice and cosy at the climbing centre. I had on really thick tights too. Um, but yeah, this is the Nina Lee Southbank sweater. I'll show you the pattern. It's a lovely sweater and sweater dress pattern, uh, perfect for colder weather. There's a dress version, a kind of sort of jumper length version and a crop version. And this is the version I made and I really like. Um, I just feel it works so well with everything, jeans and skirts. And I think I make the size eight in this one. It starts from size six, but I find normally patterns generally to come up quite fitted. So I, I think I went for the size eight, um, which is bust 34, which is slightly bigger than me, and then waist 26, which is my waist size. And then I tapered in the sleeves a little bit to the size six on the sleeves, because I find my arms are kind of on the skinny side, and so that made it a little bit more fitted on the arm. That's the size I go for um, in this pattern, and I feel it fits me well, because I didn't want it to be too tight. Um, I wanted to be able to fit um, t-shirts underneath it so I could layer up and keep cosy. But that was my day two 
the Needle South Bank sweatshirt. These crop sweatshirts, there's more than one of the more plain items I have in my wardrobe because I do often go for prints, but I just feel they work so well with everything. They're a real workhorse in my wardrobe. And um, yeah, so they're definitely gonna feature in a cold Me Made May. <laughs> so for day three, which was the bank holiday Monday here, um, I decided to go for a double Tilly and the Buttons combination, which is one of my favorite Tilly and the Buttons combinations that I wear. And um, it was the Freya top, which is um, this top here, um, and the Clio pinafore, and it's this pinafore here. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about each pattern. The Freya top is really, when I mentioned before about getting stuck in a rut um, a little bit sometimes with what I wear, one of the things I do reach for um, a lot is for my Freya tops. And I have a few of them. I've actually written a blog post talking about my love for the Freya um, top, and I'll put a link down below in case you wanna have a read and see why I love it so much. <laughs> And um, yes, yeah, so this this one is one I wore. I, I just it's just such a cozy top, and I think it really is stylish too. And it's really comfy to wear because it's a jersey top, so it's really comfy as well. And um, this version I made in this kind of black speckle jersey, which I got from Material Girl Laura, who's um, unfortunately closed her business now. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely um, black with speckles on. I think it just adds a bit of a different detail. And I made it in my standard size two for tilling the buttons. Um, yeah, and it's just a to just go with everything. I feel like these Freya tops. And it comes from this book here. You probably know this already because I've mentioned it quite a few times. The Tilly and the Button Stretch Book. And um, I've probably still got a tab in from where the uh, top is. Here are the line drawings. So you can make a dress or a top with longer sleeves or with shorter sleeves. And then I made this mock neckline version. There are a couple of other versions you can make too. But I generally like the mock neckline because it's kind of a little bit of a sort of polar neck. But it doesn't come up too high because I find it, if, if you have a top that comes up too high and it's too tight, I find that a bit restrictive. But the Freya top I don't feel sits too close or too high. So I find it quite comfy for something that keeps you cosy around the neck. So that's my Freya top from the stretch book. And then my pinafore was this pattern here. It's one of the classic um, old school Tilly and the Buttons patterns and I think it's so good. Uh, it's just a really basic sort of style pinafore. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see the line joins there. It's got, you can add optional pockets on. Yeah, it's just fairly straightforward. It's got a fairly sort of, sort of straight shape. Um, and I think it's just one of those things where you can wear it and then wear a really pretty top with it. And because it's such a simple shape, it works really well with anything. So I've made two versions, both in um, corduroy. This is my second version I made. And this gorgeous deep red corduroy that I got from Ditto Fabrics. And uh, it's so lovely, it's almost velvety feeling and it's a bit thicker than my other version, so it's extra cosy for a cold day. And I used um, buckles here, silver buckles. And for this version, I think I went for a size two and then um, and then I, and I think I um, actually graded out to size three at the, um, at the hips. So size two has a waist of 26 inches but the hips are 35 inches and then size three, the hips are 37 inches and I'm 36 inches. So because I was between the sizes, I decided to grade out. I think I made my first version just in a size two all the way down and it's fine because the corduroy is a bit lighter. It's almost like a needle cord. And so it doesn't really cling too much. But I thought with this one being a bit thicker, I didn't want it to sit too uncomfortably tight around the hips. So I graded out. And I put a picture up of me wearing my, this combination so you can see what it looks like. It's just one of those combinations I think really works well. Um, and the only thing I thought was once I've worn this, oh no, I can't wear any more Tilly and the Buttons this week because I do often wear a Tilly and the Buttons pattern because they are um, really comfy and um, relaxed and yeah, I like, like them a lot. <laughs> oh, and I thought I'd mention, if you're fairly new to sewing, I'd really recommend both the um, Clio Pinafore and the um, Freya top in the stretch book as great um, patterns to start with um, if you're fairly new. The Clio Pinafore is designed um, specifically for beginners and Tilly the, but Tilly the Buttons instructions are really clear and actually it's one of the first patterns I sewed and I, I found it um, really a good one to learn a few t new techniques but really with your hand held. So I really think that's a great starter pattern if you're a beginner sewer. And the um, Freya top is really fantastic for beginners too, particularly if you're new to sewing stretch fabrics and a bit nervous. Because it's got a stand-up mock neckline, you don't have to worry about um, any issues with getting the neckband to lie flat. There aren't too many pattern pieces, and also because it's stretchy and fairly fitted, the um, fit is fairly forgiving. So yeah, I'd, I'd recommend both those patterns if you're fairly new to sewing. And they're ones that you can wear over and over again, I think. And um, particularly the Freya top in different colours, um, yeah, you can have lots of fun with different prints, so it's a lot of fun, that one, to sew. So moving on to Tuesday, the weather was still cold, so I thought I'd put out another one of my snuggly, cosy, comfy garments to wear because I was going to be at home doing some chores. 
and I decided to wear my Sew Over It Molly dress. I've got two of these dresses and I think this one might be my favourite just because I love the fabric. It is a French terry, so it's kind of like a loop back jersey. You can see the kind of loop back texture. And it's lovely, it's really like soft to French terry actually, in the, with this beautiful flower print on. And I really like, like that print. And this came from Lily and Mimi Fabric Store, and I'll link them down below like I will with any other shops I've mentioned. They've got a lovely selection of, um, yes, yeah, um, stretch fabrics, knit fabrics, um, lots of children's ones too, lots of really cute ones. But yeah, this is really, um, I've, had, I've worn this so much and I've washed it so much and the quality, it's just, the colours have stayed really vivid, it hasn't bobbled, it's stayed a really good quality. But yeah, it's just, it's just lasted so well, because I wear it a lot. And I'll put up a picture of me wearing it. And so this is the uh, Molly dress by Sew Over It. And it comes from this um, e-book here, which is um, one, I think Sew Over It have released a few e-books, this is their City Break e-book. And it's basically an online... Um, online book you download and it comes with a load of patterns so you don't have to print out all the patterns I've just got here printed out the molly instructions I have only that's the only pattern I've actually made from the um, city break ebook but it is on my sewing list one day to go back and have a proper look through and see if there's anything else I'd like to make but I bought it particularly because I love the look of the molly top and I'll show you the line drawings so here it is um, it's a top and dress with very dropped sleeves it's quite a relaxed fit it's not designed to be too fitted and um, I think you can change the look quite a lot um, depending on what fabric you use. So with my French cherry, it's, um, it's kind of like a chunky sort of cosy dress. But I've also seen Molly tops made in more drapey fabrics like viscose jersey for a more kind of summery um, look. So yeah, those are the, diff the versions. Um, and um, you can have a lot of fun with stripes in this one. As you can see, Lisa herself modelling is a, yeah, a lot of fun with stripe matching and playing with stripes going in different directions. Um, yeah, from how the pattern pieces are laid out. But yeah, so I made this dress version. As I said, I'll pop a picture of me wearing it. Um, I think, I made, what size did I make in this? I made the size eight, which is the smallest size available on this pattern, which is bust 33, waist 26, hips 36. So that's pretty much my measurements while my bust is one inch smaller. And I find it fits nicely. It's not too super tight fitted. As you can see, it's quite a relaxed fit. It's just a really comfy dress for hanging around the house. I usually pop a t-shirt underneath and layer up. Um, but that was what I wore on Tuesday, the Molly dress by So Over It. For Wednesday, I decided on another um, separate outfit, so another skirt and top. And I do find I'm often drawn towards um, skirts and tops. And I think um, I really like about me made me, it makes you start thinking more about what you are drawn to and what you are sort of reaching for more than other things. And I do often reach for a skirt and a top. I think it may be, I don't know why it's because you can kind of layer up on top and wear a cosy jumper. I don't even know. Um, but this, the skirt, this is the skirt I wore. And it is the um, estuary skirt by So Liberated. It's another pattern company, so I'm doing well. Um, I'll show you the skirt pattern. It's a really nice one. Here it is. So it's a kind of, um, it's a gathered at the waist skirt with a flat front waistband and then elastic at the back. And then there's a button placket down the front, but it, you can make it as a faux placket because it's got the elastic at the back for you to get in and out of. It's got patch pockets. And it comes um, in a number of different le lengths, from sort of knee length or midi or um, sort of floor length. And um, yeah, I really like the look of this pattern. And the first version I tried was this version. I'm, and I ordered this, um, I think it's a cotton linen blend from Fabric Godmother. In this kind of um, sort of blue, sort of denim blue almost colour. And um, when it arrived, it was a bit thicker than I expected. And it didn't really, when I sewed it up into the skirt, I didn't, I wasn't so keen on it initially. Initially I'd made it with an um, elasticated waistband at the back and I think the fabric was too thick so it felt like it was bunching too much at the back. And I also made it midi length and um, I just didn't feel me. I love midi length than other people. I'm just not sure it's a, a length that I feel very comfortable in myself. So I hacked this um, skirt a little bit. I chopped it off to make it short um, and I, I moved the patch pockets up to sort of keep, be able to keep those on so they kind of looked in proportion to the skirt. I then... Um, took the waistband off and replaced it with a um, fitted waistband all the way around. So the buttons are sort of real buttons because I now need to be able to open them up to get in and out of this skirt. And I sort of borrowed the waistband from the Megan Nielsen Brumby skirt because um, I, I like how that fits on me. So I use that waistband to attach to the top. So it's kind of like an estuary skirt but a little bit hacked because um, I really liked um, a lot of aspects of it. So I was really pleased to be able to rescue it. And I've actually gone on to make a couple of shorter estuary skirts and I chose, after this um, version, I chose drapier fabric so that the elastic waistband at the back didn't feel too bulky. But I'm really pleased I could make this work. And it felt like quite a thrifty make because 
I use this um, lining. This is um, some leftover from a pair of my husband's old um, pyjama bottoms and I turned them into shorts because he got a hole in the knee and then I hacked off the bottom and used it to um, make this. That felt quite thrifty. Uh, and I really love the buttons on this one. They're um, sort of grey with a kind of little almost marbly effect on them. It's really hard to see them on camera, camera but yeah, they're kind of grey with a marbly effect. And I use this sort of white top stitching or grey top stitching too to kind of match them. But th there it is. Um, it's quite a cute skirt, I think. I'll put a picture of me wearing it. And again, I wore this with a ready to wear top that's really old. Um, it's gone a bit bobbly actually, so it's one of those things I want that all, maybe that is one that needs to go because it's getting very bobbly. But um, I thought it looked nice with this skirt. Um, I think I made the size, um, what size did I make for this skirt? I made the size two initially, which was a waist and 26, and the hips 34.5 because it's so gathered. Um, the finished garment measurement for the hips is huge. So um, it didn't, it wasn't gonna be a problem. Um, so, but then actually I ended up sizing down to make the size zero the next time with the waist 25, because I found once the elastic was in, it felt like it was hanging a bit low and I prefer the elastic to be a bit tighter around my waist so it sits right on my natural waist rather than sort of sitting a bit further down. So that's the Say Liberated Estuary skirt. It's one I don't get out a lot actually. I think I always um, reach my other viscose versions, um, the sort of more swishy ones, or my denim, my denim Brumby skirt. I often go for those over this skirt and I don't know why because I really like it. So that was nice because me made, made, made me think, right, I'm going to get it out and choose something different that I don't always go for for no particular reason. But that was Wednesday. So for Thursday, um, I knew it was going to be another cold day in the house because um, on Wednesday we discovered the leak. So yesterday um, we had the radiators off to make sure nothing got any worse. So I decided to um, do some layering and I thought I'd choose to layer over a dress. Um, and I thought I'd wear this dress here, which is another pattern company, French Navy Forsyth dress. Um, and I made it in this um, lovely um, Ecats cotton, which I got from a Tokri. And it's quite a wintry um, colour, I thought, but quite lightweight. So I thought um, it would be great to make for a winter dress I could layer up. So that's why I made this with this in mind. And I'll show you the pattern. So this is a um, Forsyth dress by uh, French Navy. So it's got a slightly dropped waist. It's quite a relaxed dress, relaxed fit, a dropped waist. It's got a panel bodice, sort of grown on sleeves. It's got cuffs you can turn up. It's got so these um, sort of pockets um, here. And then on the back, it's a button up back, which I really like that feature. And I'll show you my button up back here. I um, chose to kind of add caramel buttons, just add a pop of colour. And I thought they went quite well with the navy. And um, on my version, you can't really see the panel bodice on this version, but it does look lovely when you do um, make a version playing with stripes. I've made one other version when I had a fun playing with stripes in different directions. But yeah, for this one, I kept it simple because I thought I wanted to make it a layering piece. So I wanted to keep it quite straightforward. I didn't turn up the cuffs, I just kept it really straightforward so the, the cuffs just sit um, unturned up, as it were. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I made the size, what size did I make in this one? Oh, here's the line drawing so you can see a little better how the dress looks. But yeah, it's a really nice relaxed day dress and a really enjoyable sew too. I really like French Navy patterns actually. Um, I made the Stellanti, it's a free pattern a long time ago by French Navy and I hadn't made anything else. And then I've made a couple of their patterns in quicker succession this winter the um, Forsyth dress and the Fleetwood dress, and I really enjoyed sewing both of them. But yeah, so I made the size um, six, I think, which is bust 32, waist 24, hips 34. So that was my bust measurement. Um, and again, it's fairly loose fitting, so I didn't think it would matter if my waist is slightly bigger than the 24 inches. And again, with the gathered skirt, I didn't think it would matter if my hips were slightly bigger. And it is a slightly, fairly relaxed fit. And I put up a picture so you can see me wearing it. And I layered this over a Freya top by Tilling the Buttons. But I thought, well, I'm allowed to wear another Freya because I am wearing a new pattern company um, on Thursday, which is French Navy. So yeah, it's a, I really like um, this look. Um, I think later in the day I put a big cardigan on top as well because it got really cold. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a really nice dress for layering, but also great for the summer too. And it's not one I reach for a lot, so again, thank you Me Made Me for encouraging me to um, yeah, reach for it, because um, I do really like it and I really enjoy wearing it. So that's the Forsyth dress by French Navy, which is what I wore yesterday. So that brings me to today, the final day of my first week of Me Made Me. And um, today, again, it's cold, I'm wearing something cosy, and I'm wearing a toaster sweater by Soho 7, which is this pattern here. And again, this is one of my earliest makes, actually, from when I just first started sewing. And it's a lovely pattern. There's two different versions of the toaster sweater and it's this version here. It's got this sort of funnel neckline, raglan sleeves, oversized cuffs and bottom band and it's got a fairly cropped look to it. 
and I'll put a picture of me wearing it so you can see what it looks like today. I'm just wearing it with a pair of ready to wear jeans. And as I said, this is my oldest toaster sweater, um, one I made when I was just fairly new to sewing. And I made it using this lovely fleece back sweatshirt that I got from First for Fabrics. It's really nice and cosy. Um, I like the kind of print on it. I think it's quite cute. This is well worn, this garment. Um, I made the size extra small, which is bust 31, 32 inches, waist 23 and a half to 24 and a half inches, and hips 34, 35 inches. My waist is slightly bigger as ever, but because it's fairly straight fit, it seems fine over the waist. And it doesn't really um, go down to the hips. I think the hips measurement probably is a bit more relevant for version two, which is a bit longer. But this version I'll show you just sits kind of above my hips, um, just around where my jeans start. So yeah, I didn't need to worry about the hips measurement for this one. But yeah, it's a lovely pattern. It's a perfect pattern, I think, for, again, for beginners, a bit like the Freya, because it's got a stand-up neckline. Um, you don't have to worry about sort of a, getting a neckband to sit flat. And it's got raglan sleeves, which always go in really nicely. And then you don't have to hem it because it's got a bottom band and cuffs. So yeah, I really like this. Um, I think it is a bit of a classic um, um, indie sewing pattern and I've got a few versions and they're so um, nice when the weather is cold. I didn't really think I'd be wearing mine into May and I'm really hoping later this month I will be able to get out some slightly more summery or spring dresses um, so that it's not just a month of um, wearing my winter wardrobe. But yeah, that's what I'm wearing today, the Soha 7 toaster sweater, a really great pattern. So that's what I wore in week one of Me Made May 2021. Um, it's been a fun week. It's a shame it's been so cold. I do have, have definitely got to um, go back to my winter wardrobe and pull out some wintry things. But I really, really hope that um, later in May the weather will warm up so I'll get a chance to pull out some spring and summer dresses for May too. But I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about um, what I've been wearing. I've really enjoyed the challenge of thinking about wearing a different pattern company each day. It has got me thinking about what I'm wearing, what I'm reaching for, what I don't wear so much. And I'm sure I'll continue to be thinking about that through May. So it's a great exercise, I think. So thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this vlog, I'd love it if you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. And if you do, then please do also press the bell icon because then you'll get notified when my future vlogs come out. I'm hoping to do a couple more vlogs where I'm talking about um, other weeks in May and what I've been wearing. Um, so yeah, I'm planning to get some different outfits out. It's just a bit of fun really, I guess. Um, so thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye.